This is a short tutorial for education students and research strategies. My goals for today are three. First, to introduce myself, to help you so you know how to choose the right database for an education topic, and choose the right keywords and combine them together to get a good search strategy. Okay, let's start with me. My name is Judy Nixon. I am the Education Librarian. Here's my email address. My office is in the Hissey Library, the Humanities, Social Science, and Education Library. The E in Hissey stands for Education. And my uh, office is room 253. When you need help, there are several ways you can get help. Of course, you can always email me or stop by my office, but there are other methods also. For example, one method we have is an online chat service uh, where you can email or online chat to a librarian. Another method is to stop in the library and stop at the front desk and talk to a staff member in person. Then third, of course, you can always email me, jnixon at purdue.edu. And the fourth method is uh, to use one of our library guides. And I'm going to show you how to use the Education Library Guide today. OK, start your research at the library homepage. That's www.lib.purdue.edu. To find the library guides, look for this link under the Discover um, column uh, on the left-hand side of the page, which says Library Guides by Subject. Click on that. From there, you will see a window where you can type in a, um, a subject area. I've typed in Education here, and then you click the Search button. Then uh, you will get a list of all the guides that have the word education in their title or have something to do with education. The first one is the education guide we're going to be using today. It's just called education. Click on that. Now this is what the education um, library guide looks like. Um, there is highlighted up in yellow the direct URL to this page if you wanted to take that and uh, bookmark that on your computer. The very first tab on this page is called Article Databases uh, because that's um, the most important thing that most people are usually looking for, so I made it the very first tab. The rest of the tabs have other information related to education. Um, but under the Feature Databases, there are, are several important databases in the field, and the two most important are Education Source and ERIC. We're going to use ERIC today as a sample database. But before we go to ERIC to do our search, we need to sit down and think about what the question is that we're researching. Let's take this as a sample question. What is the influence of gender on communication in the workplace? Write down your question and circle the three or four most important words in the statement. So here I've circled gender, communication, and workplace. Write each one of these words in a column on a piece of paper, and then begin listing synonyms underneath each word. For example, under communication, you might have conversation or listening or interaction. Then we're going to list all the synonyms together um, on one line, and we're going to separate them with an OR. The OR here is capitalized. It doesn't have to be capitalized when you enter it into a computer. I've just capitalized it here so you can see it. So the words that are synonyms are separated by this OR. It's really called a Boolean OR, and it's an operator that tells the computer how to combine the words. Then the concepts that we have, the three different concepts, are separated by the word AND. This is a Boolean AND. Again, it is an operator that gives directions to the computer on how to search this. So here we're telling the computer, find one of these four words that relate to the word gender. You, each article must have one of these words, gender or women or woman or sex. And each article must also have one of the four words related to our communication concept and one of the four or five words related to workplace. Let's take another question just to see how this works. Let's take a question related to, a little closer related to the field of education. Let's choose dissatisfaction with testing in the No Child Left Behind Act. So here we have two main concepts, No Child Left Behind Act and testing. Now you might think there's a third concept here, dissatisfaction, but I have crossed it off as a concept. It is a 
it is better to omit these words that are not real concrete words or real subject related words and stick with very subject related terms for your search. So dissatisfaction is like influence. It could be expressed in many ways and therefore we might have trouble finding all the articles on dissatisfaction just by using that word. So we're going to omit it. Here's how we would enter this search. Um, in a database, No Child Left Behind, and testing. Okay, let's go back to our library guide, and let's click on the hot link to ERIC. We'll be using the ERIC database from, um, from the EBSCO company. So once we click on that, this is what we'll load. We'll see um, that we're in EBSCOhost. That's the company that we buy ERIC from. And we'll see that we're searching the ERIC database. Let's choose the advanced search. Click on advanced search. That calls up three windows. We're going to put one concept of our search in each window. So in the first line, we type in no child left behind. And the second line, we're typing in the word testing. The computer will automatically use a Boolean AND between these separate lines. So now we can press the search button. The computer responds with 793 hits. Ooh, that's maybe a little more than we were wanting to look at. Um, but, but there are a couple of things we can do to narrow this down. Uh, so the computer begins listing those 793 articles in an order which they consider the most important at the top, a relevancy order. And it gives us the title of the article, the author, and the place of publication, and the subject headings that have been assigned to this article. ERIC is a database that is human indexing. That means a person has looked at every article and assigned these subject headings. There's a couple of things we can do to narrow our search down to get fewer than 793 articles. We can change our terms um, to a descriptor or subject heading field. What Eric calls descriptors in the second line up here by testing is um, the words that will occur in the subject line below the citation. So we're going to make testing be a subject word. So we're going to change this field to search the descriptor field. And then we're also going to click the peer-reviewed articles over here in the left-hand column. That will limit our articles to scholarly articles um, and that will narrow our search down. Let's click our search button again. And now we see we have 139 articles. That is a very reasonable number of articles for us to scan through. Now you'll notice that the first one has No Child Left Behind in the title of the article and it has testing in the subject heading field. Remember we specified that the word testing must appear in that field. And it is a peer-reviewed article because we have that checked on the left. Now, if we're interested in this article, we should just click the Add to Folder button. That will keep track of all articles we're interested in. It's sort of like putting it in your shopping cart. Now, when you're using the ERIC database, um, many of the articles will appear in full text within the database. These are the kind of links that you will see that will take you to the full text. So there are actually three different ways that ERIC shows full text availability. The first one in the upper left hand corner is a PDF that is available. If you click here, the PDF of that article will load. The second one links to a full text, but it won't be a PDF. The third one also links to a full text. But some articles don't have the full text in the database. That is because EBSCO has not been able to contract with the publisher to get permission to put the full text in the database. If you um, see this Find It at Purdue button, you'll know that ERIC database does not have the full text. And EBSCO is recommending that you check with Purdue to see if we have the full text from another source. All you do is click on this button and it will load a separate little database that we have in the library that lists all of the full text articles that we have. So this particular journal, the Journal of Negro Education, we get from JSTOR, from ProQuest, and from Wilson. Let's choose the ProQuest link. We can choose any one of them, but we'll choose the ProQuest link. That will automatically load the ProQuest database and it will do a search to find the exact article that you were looking for. And uh, you will see a record below like 
this one on the screen. And you'll see that ProQuest does have this article in full text and in PDF. If you click on the PDF, you will load the full text of the article just like this. Once you have the full text loaded, you can download it to your computer, you can print it, uh, you can read it. Um, it is now part of your research. Another database I want to recommend and show you how to use is Google Scholar because this technique of using the Boolean and and or works in Google Scholar also. So when you go to Google Scholar, which is www.scholar.google.com, the first thing you'll see is the search window. And right on the right-hand side of the search window is a little arrow. If you click on that little arrow, it will open up the advanced search screen. And that's what we're seeing on the bottom half of this screen here. Now we're going to enter our search very much the way we did in EBSCO. We're going to put testing on one line and on the exact phrase line, we're going to type no child left behind. I've also uh, chosen to limit our research to the social sciences. Um, that will narrow our results down some too. Now we just press enter to do our search. The system responds with 27,000 articles or citations. Um, that is an uh, enormous amount, but Google always comes back with a huge number of hits. But their relevancy ranking, ranking is so effective that usually we can find what we need by scanning through the first few pages. You'll notice on this one, accountability systems, that uh, the full text is available at Purdue. If you click over there, it will load the full text from the JSTOR database.